Hi, I'm Chris, and uh, today I'm going to talk to you um, why my little friend Neil uh, really desperately needs you to talk to him. So, Neil, this is everybody, everybody, this is Neil. Um, I'm, I'm doing a PhD, I'm hopefully defending my PhD very soon, on plasmas. And in this audience, if you say plasmas, then you're like, woo, yay, plasmas, I know plasmas. They are beautiful, they are sexy, they are out there, we can look at them. They're so far away, they have nothing to do with me, and if we watch Star Trek, then we know that you need plasma to run a warp core. That's about most of our relationship to plasmas. But plasmas are actually um, something quite real. Um, they are ionized gases under very particular circumstances. Uh, in that case, all the electrons are simply ripped away from the atoms, and something amazing happens, and it's uh, something that needs communication, and that's something that Neil really wants you to understand. Um, why do you need that kind of weird thing? We all need it because we are space geeks and we love space, so we like our satellites. Um, they happen to float in a plasma, so we need to understand the plasma. Their solar cells are built with plasma technology. They would not have power if there was not a plasma. Now their engines are working on plasma, so there we go again. But um, you don't even have to go to space because uh, that screen actually is plasma technology and those blinding lights but those might be LEDs, but the lights all around us are plasma. So you're surrounded by plasmas, and you need to understand what those things are in order to put them to work. Um, okay, good, space, high tech, pretty cool, right? Um, no, it's even easier. I can build my own lightsaber, and it costs me 400 euros. And uh, I don't have to go to a special uh, place, I just go to the department store and buy myself power supply, a pin, a glass part, a bit of gas that I have to order online, that's actually the most uh, expensive part, and ta -da, I have a cold atmospheric pressure plasma. It's cheap, it's re reproducible, and it's quite awesome. Um, you can touch it, because it's cold. And what does that do for you? Lots of questions. So, um, you're there, you have a new tool in your hand. The new tool is not really new. We have been using it all the time and suddenly questions are coming up that um, I put a person into space and that person is gonna be nine months isolated from supplies. That person is gonna be nine months from the next doctor and the next phone call to ask your physician about the infection on your arm might just take over 40 minutes to get one answer. So you're quite isolated and suddenly you have this new tool and you say, hey, I can do awesome stuff with plasmas. And this is what my research was about. Um, turns out if you put a plasma in contact with biological cells, magic happens. You start killing bacteria and the skin cells say, yay, plasma. So the skin survives while the bacteria die. And uh, you have a cheap treatment tool for skin cells and you say, this is amazing. This is, this is why I do research. This is why I'm, I'm so passionate about science. And then, you make another test round with the same settings and the same bacteria and nothing happens. And you're like, okay. Um, then you ask your biologist uh, friend who is also a scientist, um, do you even talk the same words? Like, what happened? Nothing, we did the same thing as always. Two months later, you have figured out that the poor student who was tasked to mix the batch that will give growth to the bacteria that you will be treating with your precious research changed the growth medium because it doesn't matter, right? Yeah, it does. Science is super complicated. In my case, it changed everything. So if you make one measurement one day, it works. Another measurement next day does not work. So we need to talk, all of us, we really need to talk to each other. We need to learn each other's languages so that we can explain what is actually happening. And without communication, Neil, the little astronaut on the planet Mars, on the asteroid, on lunar surface, will not be able to survive. And we just heard how important psychology for that is. We just heard how important outreach for that is. So if we don't know how to talk each other's language, we will not be getting off this planet. Because just for my research, these are the general research fields that I had to talk to. And if you ask a genet somebody who's doing genetical engineering how many parts per million hydrogen peroxide he or she would like to have in solution, you will be getting back a very big question mark. So talk, talk, talk. Without talking, it's not going to work. Without communicating, it's not going to work. And one day, we might just solve actual problems with what we're doing. Thank you.